Welcome back, this is Goku Sun DBZ, and welcome back for part two of a three-part video looking at artwork collection the gallery for the Capcom Fighting Collection. In part one, we looked at all the Darkstalkers games and stuff. This time in part two, we are looking at Street Fighter or rather Hyper Street Fighter 2 and first three collection with uh, Super Gem Fighter and Super Puzzle Fighter 2 Turbo and then in the third we will be looking at Red Earth, Cyberbots Full Metal Madness and Capcom Fine Collection. So with that said let's get to Street Fighter first actually. First up we have this iconic piece of artwork of course from the uh, Anniversary Collection cover art which included both technically this along with also Street Fighter 3 Third Strike not necessarily a great version but still and I do like the artwork overall that very much detail on the face of Akuma with the eye and everything Next up, interesting artwork, uh, of course obviously having a variety of characters from different games, whether it be Street Fighter 3, the Alpha series, or actual Street Fighter 2. Interesting stare down going on. Then, interesting, sort of like a playing card, I guess you could say, art. Interesting color scheme and stuff with Chun, which of course, let's be honest, Chun is the original Wafu. Really, when it comes down to it, especially for fighting games, she is the original, and so many archetypes of female fine game characters is based on Chun because Chun was really the original badass with of course her awesome spinning bird kick okay and that's all the artwork not very much next up super gym fighter Arguably really cool. I actually really like this art. It is interesting how they instead decide to make the characters look more cutesy. Though they kind of did the same thing with uh, Puzzle Fighter as well. And of course that was a character that was specifically from originally uh, Red Earth. Which is interesting. She's really the only character from Red Earth who's been in multiple games. In over the years and of course is interesting when people talk about this game though it's interesting how very rarely does anybody ever bring up the fact Ibuki was actually in the game probably my favorite female character from the Street Fighter 3 games uh, Kid Ryu which honestly looks perfect for a lot of animes. Though, of course, once again you have the smirk smile, which goes perfectly for the personality of Kin Masters. Young Chun, which kind of looks... Reminds me a little bit of actually like teenage Sakura. Kid Zangief is just funny. That over-the-top expression. Of course, actual Sakura, which doesn't look a huge amount younger than she did in Alpha. Which made sense, because she was only a high schooler. She looks like maybe middle school. Of course, surprisingly, Ibuki doesn't look that much different overall, at least. 
Of course, basically young. Though, for all you know, it could be normal Morrigan just pretending to be younger, given she is a succubus and can change her outward appearance, thanks to supernatural powers. Younger, which, honestly, of the kid versions of the characters, I think this is one of my personal favorites, and the fact they give the Sutra actually like a, a face, which is kind of weird, but interesting at the same time. Interesting spin on the redesign. Kid, Felicia doesn't look too much different, honestly. Now, this is, was interesting in addition. Adding a Red Earth character to the game was an interesting choice, as here in the West, pretty much no one knew of Red Earth. Dan, which actually surprisingly doesn't look that much like an actual kid, surprisingly. I think it's because of the classic Dan expression. Kid Akuma, which still looks badass no matter what. Some promotional artwork. But yeah, this is a very unique concept game, and Pocket Fighter, or also known as Super Gym Fighter, is a very unique Capcom fine game compared to others because there's so many like cameos and references in their moves how the characters can transform as they do attacks and like with some of the attacks like Chun uh, ends up briefly appearing in like a Jill Valentine costume of course obviously reference to Resident Evil and I appreciate that that's what makes Pocket Fighter or Super Gem Fighter so unique compared to other Capcom fine games. All the cameos and references to other Capcom games is just frankly awesome in my opinion. And Nurse version Morrigan, which actually suits the character overall. And seeing like basic info on like doing moves and as you see right there it shows like like with some of her moves showing like stuff form or stuff she does when she turns into like chill like rocket launcher gun knife obviously references of course to like I said the original classic Resident Evil which is still an all-time classic even if it hasn't aged well like the horrible dialogue still love it though but in total, yeah, you get an okay size roster and variety of different characters. With getting actually multiple Darkstalker characters in total, you get actually th three Darkstalker characters. Of course, the cla like special moves and everything. And then, but in this, it's all in English. Some more awesome illustration artwork. Arguably really cool how they all just pose in there together as a group. Now that's just funny. Then basically drawings and stuff, I guess you could say this is how like a kid probably would draw these kid characters anyways, which is quite suitable. And I do like, it was smart that they of course went with the Street Fighter 2 version costume chun in the game. Ah yes, I remember these because even over here still, pretty popular in the 90s. These vending machine things with like big thin plastic balls where you would have like little toys and stuff inside. You still would find them occasionally in some arcades and places, but not that much. Not like it was back in the 90s here in the US or especially always been huge in Japan these things. Too bad we never had any, like, Capcom things like this. Would have been awesome. Ah, uh, 
just reading and having a cup of coffee or tea. Ugh, Fei Long. Interesting. Mr. Of course, Guy, which is one of my opinion underrated characters in Street Fighter. Uh, suitable for Akuma, basically just rowing himself in a boat by himself, as he should be, as a just an awesome, quiet badass. And Felicia in a cage. And now, with like Broadway type stuff, which makes sense. Since Felicia was all about like, performing and stuff on stage. And then, Here's some of the looks of some of the, like, stages from the game, which are pretty cool, like, references and stuff, actual reference to Capcom themselves. Some cool, like, little places and stuff. I love some of these stage designs. And all the cameos and references in the background is just awesome. This is, like, one of the main, like, last stages in the game. Obviously a reference to Darkstalkers. And stuff basically and like their ending stories and things. As well as some of the basic information concepts of how like the main screen's gonna look in the game with of course life gauge and everything as well is down below like for special moves you need to gather so many jewels and stuff or gems rather I mean there's a reason why I was called gym fighter in America or pocket fighter in Japan I think gym fighter makes just a little more sense to me personally but yeah certain moves will get you specific gems and specific amount of gems will get you certain special moves and stuff to use in the game, so it's interesting. So basically the goal is to make sure at the end you have more gems. That is the key to winning in the game and get special abilities. Uh, Dan. No matter what, I am glad that Dan has been in a lot of different games throughout the years. And I know, besides me, there is definitely a hardcore, dedicated fan base to Dan Habiki. I know because a few videos I've done, gameplays and stuff, with Dan, I've definitely seen a few specific uh, comments, which I appreciate. Specifically, uh... A YouTube YouTube commenter who's coming a few of my damn videos that's called Dan for Street Fighter 5 though technically now of course he obviously me at the Street Fighter 5 now we just need Dan for Street Fighter 6 but with the more realistic art style with the wretches and evil engine I'm wondering how that would work with Dan Again, to see here in the concepts, different references and stuff for the moves and stuff with the characters. Ah, uh, Akuma. And it looks like that's it for that. Next up, Puzzle Fighter, which is arguably, in my opinion, the greatest Tetris clone of all time. 
with of course the more kid style characters like the other, which is appreciated, and in general the gameplay is just awesome. This is honestly a really fun game that I've always enjoyed, and I always try to convince more people to get this game. With people I knew that had PS3 and 316s, I always tried to convince them to get a digital copy of like the HD version of this game, because it's just that good to play. And I'm happy I have a PS1 copy of this game to this day. I mean, given price-wise, it's actually a very affordable game, surprisingly, still. But it's a great game. If you have the opportunity, if you've never actually played this, do yourself a favor and get this Capcom Fine Collection. It's definitely worth the money. You're basically paying $4 a game. That's worth it for all the Darkstalker games, these awesome cool games as well as of course Red Earth which I will be doing a recorded playthrough of Red Earth hopefully very soon and I'm genuinely looking forward to it uh, Sakura definitely a bit more of a bright green than what I'm used to of course for Morrigan Just staring at a butterfly. Kind of like some you would expect from an actual cat, to be fair. Interesting seeing like a kid version, though, of... Definitely a Donovan is interesting. And we see the over-the-top... ...expression on Dan Habiki's face. But like I said... Dan will probably always be one of my favorite Street Fighter characters of all time because of how much personality he shows. And this is a cool little reference, uh, actually, to a character in specifically Cyberbots. Worse, awesome Akuma doing his classic stance for doing the demon. Actually, I like that art pose of Morrigan. Classic pose for Chun. Definitely a proper thing for Akuma, that's for sure. Getting ready to do his demon. Satsu... Satsu no Hado. I love, honestly, it's one of my favorite things about the artwork is getting to check out all this cool, like, promotional artwork is always quite enjoyable. But it's sad you don't really get that as much nowadays, unfortunately. Really, that died out in the 2000s, unfortunately. Classic, basically, giving the basic info how the game plays on an arcade cabinet. Basically, info how the gyms actually work in game. And info like on how the gym stuff work for the characters. Looks like just bored out of his mind expression up there. Thanks to things like Sailor Moon and Sakura and stuff will always be a lot of reasons why like the classic Japanese like schoolgirl costume will always be very well liked in video games and anime because of how iconic and Morrigan definitely her design has definitely arguably over the years become one of the most iconic characters as a whole for Capcom and their massive character rosters of different characters they've created throughout the years. Though I think Darkstalkers holds a very special place for character designs. 
but you can't mistake and the way they do with the designs of the characters and stuff you get a pretty good idea of their personalities and the characteristics of them from their designs that's a thing like Capcom were masters I mean in the 90s let's be honest Capcom was at its pinnacle in the late 90s literally they were on top of the world and I feel like though Capcom is getting there again. I feel like right now, Capcom is basically on the verge of a second golden age right now. I feel like some people, of course, will bring up faults of things like Capcom, or rather Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, though I, of course, arguably still defend and constantly still, on occasion, do gameplay videos and stuff because of how fun the game is. And that is where Capcom has always excelled in games, is the fun factor. Whether it be fighting mechanics, character interactions, and everything. And they can even do a good job with their interpretations of other company characters like, well, Capcom vs. SNK. Like, they did a great job incorporating with a Capcom feel to the SNK characters. Which is why I think to this day so many people still love specifically Capcom vs. SNK 2 equally as much as Marvel vs. Capcom 2. Interesting sort of idea. And then more information basically on like the layouts on how like some of the gyms and stuff would actually work for mechanics and things. And the actual, like, layout, how the actual stage would look playing the puzzle game. And that's it. But, since it ended up shorter than I was expecting, I was do the rest now. So let's get to it. Cyberbots. Full Metal Madness. Uh, first up, really awesome piece of artwork. Cyberbots is a very unique 2D fighting game compared to any other out there. Yeah, there's other mech 2D fighting games out there, such as specifically come to mind, uh, I would say... Gundam Battle Assault 2, specifically for PS1, is another game. Interestingly enough, it was released around the same time as Cyberbots, though it was only, I believe, released on PS1. Cyberbots was released strictly in Japan and strictly for the Saturn, which is why up until, thanks to some of the HD stuff, also, fun fact, this game is was also released in the Capcom Stadium Collection as well. So, fun fact, actually, this is the second release of, actually, Cyberbots, interestingly enough. Now, even though it's not as good quality, it's not HD quality, sadly, I recommend going back and checking out a video I did years ago of uh, playing Cyberbots with, uh, with uh, what I call... Robot or Gundam Akuma, which is awesome. Like a Gundam size robotic Akuma. Which I will not be able to play in this because I had used a, well, a Game Shark on this Saturn to play with the character. So I'll have to use a base roster character when I do an HD quality, which of course I will be choosing obviously Jin as the pilot. And yeah, of course, this is the game where Jin originally came from. Which, of course, would then be featured in Marvel vs. Capcom 1. As well as Marvel vs. Capcom 2. Weirdly enough, he would not return in Marvel 3 for some reason. There's probably a story behind the scenes as to why he didn't. But it's a shame, because Jin is a pretty cool, honestly awesome design character. With a great, energetic 
outgoingness, personality, which you really see. Sadly, he doesn't play as good in Marvel 2 as he did in Marvel 1. Admittedly, when I got Marvel vs. Capcom 1 originally on the Dreamcast, I didn't at the time know about this game. It wasn't until the, I would say, probably mid to late 2000s I learned about actually Cyberbots. When I got a digital copy of Cyberbots on PSN for the uh, PS3. That was my first introduction to Cyberbots. After trying the game, I loved it so much I wanted to go out of my way to get an original physical version of the game for, of course, the Saturn. And it really, there is nothing like playing a game with a classic Saturn Model 2 controller. Here we have just a great piece of artwork with Jin, given his, of course, classic fist pose. And some of the other really cool, I think, characters in the games. Definitely had some very unique mech design, as well as some very interesting pilots. Now this looks like a character that could come straight from Xeon or something from an actual Gundam series, where it be Mobile Suit Gundam or like Gundam Wing. One of the other distinctive design characters in the game, I think, other than Jin. Of course, you see these characters as a little reference as an assist in Marvel 1, besides just Jin. So you actually have a couple of references to the this game actually in Marvel 1. Definitely some really out there cyberpunk design robot mechs and stuff. Arguably this is probably considered to be the most iconic of the robot design base mechs you can play with in the game. Which is a very interesting game. Playstyle, it's a three button game. You have like two standard like a lion heavy type attack and then you have like a button strictly for like your weapons, your lasers and guns and stuff. So it plays a little differently than your standard Capcom fine game. But yeah, I love some of these unique mech designs in this game. Definitely some of these do not look anything like mechs you would expect in some like Gundam. Because some of these are definitely kind of crazy. You can tell Cyberpunk was heavily influential in this game. Though Cyberpunk wasn't actually that big in the 90s, it was more Stingpunk in the 90s. Funny enough, Cyberpunk was huge in the 80s and the 2010s. It's really come back. Now this is one of the most interesting uh, mechs to fight against in the game because it's like a robot, like octopus. It's very bizarre. But it's really cool, the movements and everything, just the sprite work. Now that actually looks like something I could actually picture in Gundam. as well as that. Which is pretty cool, one of the final characters you fight. And of course some of your promotional artwork, which it was weird how they would use a couple of actual 3D clips combined with predominantly 90% regular sprite work. So it makes the CG stand out a lot more unfortunately. In basic info showing like the pilots in the center along with obviously the mechs. But seriously, 
If you get a chance, honestly, give Cyberbots a chance. It's actually a really fun game. It's a crazy over the top, but it's a lot of fun. It is actually also really cool just again to see where it was actually Jin originally came from. Arguably one of the coolest probably characters, at least design wise, from Capcom in the 90s. Obviously, his character in the story and stuff does have health issues. Love artwork like this because it feels like something I could picture in other an like animes and stuff. Specifically, I could picture some of this artwork like in something like G Gundam series. As well as even stuff like Robotech, which is probably was actually my introduction to mech anime and everything. So I have a lot to owe to that getting me into stuff like this. So thank you, Robotech. Or in Japan, it was Macross. Some basic early concept designs, which is interesting. Getting to see where stuff originally started and how it would end up evolving. Looks like a lot of the basics from the concept actually went through with some of the characters, though. A wild kid that kind of looks like would have come from the jungles, same place as a certain green fellow in Street Fighter. Well, some of these designs on this one female character kind of reminds me just a tad of a character from Final Fantasy VIII, and that being Sorceress Ida. That's honestly cool, seeing some of the basic concepts, how the transform and stuff works for actual in-game. I just wish during this that I could actually change the music playing in the background, like the actual music from the game. One of the first actual robots you play in the arcade mode. It's unfortunate this game never got an official regular physical release in the West. Only through these, like, compilations like this. But still, it is nice, at least, that it eventually would get released here in the West. Because games like this, it's a shame, like, but this game was lucky enough to actually get a release. It took, it took over two decades to get Red Earth finally released here in the West. And the fact, unlike all these games which were released, like, for the Saturn and stuff, the fact Red Earth was released strictly on, like, PC and only in Japan is so weird for Capcom at that time period. Though it was an interesting concept idea. I 
I would not be surprised, given some of these mech designs in the game, I would not be surprised if some of the people in charge of Cyberbots were, like, Robotech fans. Let's quickly see what we have here. Just some basic artwork, of course. Cover art for the game, which is awesome. I love that art there with Leo from, obviously, Red Earth, along with Morrigan, and all these other awesome characters. A more full picture, showing also gems and stuff, which is kind of cool. And honestly, I could have pictured some, like, gem fight or something like Darkstalkers and Red Earth crossing over, because both kind of deal in the area of supernatural and fantasy. Now that is some pretty awesome artwork right there. Dang. See, even this goes to prove, like, Capcom still has some incredible artists. Though, a lot of their art is, of course, done by Udon, their comic division. Which still does some incredible artwork to this day, that's the thing. Like, Capcom is just awesome. When it comes to their art, they're still honestly great at their craft today. And I feel like we have a lot of, we owe a lot of thanks to Udon for a lot of this great artwork we see even now from Capcom. And a cool little, like, retro style color scheme with the artwork of Red Earth characters is cool. Yeah, a little reference here with, like, a couple of characters from all different series. Now that is just awesome right there. That picture with Leo front and center. Which makes sense, given this is literally the first time we ever get to finally play the game. But awesome other artwork of other characters we see in the background, of course, in the shadows. Another character, Ninja specifically, of course Morgan, my guy, Dimitri, which I'm glad they put him in this artwork. Ah, Blanca. Ryu and Chun, they're together, perfect. And a little mini-kid version of Dan Habiki that actually suits the Dan character so well. Ah, Lilith. Glad they also put her in. Looks like that's it for that, and the last bit of artwork, Red Earth. So, given I've never really seen Red Earth artwork, hasn't really been in much compilation type art stuff, it is actually getting a cool finally see some of this never really released artwork. I mean, these characters are cool, and look at the design of Leo, I feel like he was a heavy influence for the Digimon character, uh, Leomon, and even think about the name Leomon, Leo, like, that's not just a coincidence. Just really cool, like a cyber style, sort of cyber influenced ninja, with a, a classic style ninja character, very much like that of... Ryu Hayabusa, though he's a tech ninja. Still, it is nice to see some other cool ninja designs outside of just Ryu Hayabusa. Now, I've seen this piece of artwork before. I do like this. Another great piece of artwork. Given these are like the four main characters you can play with in the game, you really have three or four characters to play with. But it is cool the fact it has like RPG elements like you can like level up and everything. Which really distinctively makes this game very different from really any other Capcom fine game of the time period. Another great piece of artwork. Actually, if I remember correctly, I believe they used this piece of art actually in Capcom Fighting Evolution. I feel like Ibuki was a, probably a big 
or rather, this character may have actually influenced Evil Key's design. Because this actually came out before Street Fighter 3. I do love my ninja characters, and arguably this is one of the probably coolest ninja designs I've seen. It was cool they actually had him in Capcom Fine Evolution. Well, about the only character that's really going to be in multiple other games outside of Red Earth. Wouldn't mind to see characters like her make a comeback as well as Leo in a future Marvel vs. Capcom game. Arguably one of the most interesting design creatures out of that game is this. Interesting take on a dinosaur with very tiny little wings, but also horns. Like, I've never really in any other game ever seen like an interesting redesign of like a T-Rex like this, but it surprisingly looks gray in gameplay, the sprite. A cool classic like ogre creature from this time period. Very suitable. Dang, like a chimera creature. That's actually really cool looking. Probably one of the bosses you find in the game. I mirror seen this character was also in Capcom Fine Evolution. Plays very weirdly, but looks awesome. That's a interesting character. Basically, she's like a harpy. And this creature kind of looks like it was influenced by maybe Aztec or Mayan art. Looks heavily inspired, definitely, by him. And this is like the main boss of the game. Definitely kind of has like a sort of like nightmare type feel to him. Though with very interesting, definitely, design boss compared to other Capcom bosses. I'll definitely be curious to see if he's like a huge pain to fight, which I would not be surprised. Okay, that's a pretty cool wizard. I actually love the red and gold rope. And yeah, this is what it was called in Japan. War Zard. Or Wizard, however. It's kind of weird. Personally, I do like the American name Red, uh, Red Earth, personally. Definitely a lot of promotional material in Japan for this game. I'm just glad to finally see this game finally released to us in the West. Especially as somebody who has been playing Capcom games literally probably since around 1990... What? I'd say probably 1993 is when I first started playing Capcom games. So I've been playing Capcom... Dang, that makes me feel old. Next year will make 30 years I've been playing Capcom games. Though, pretty much almost as long I've been playing Square Enix as well, going back to like Chrono Trigger as well as uh, Final Fantasy 3 slash AK6. Quest mode. Yep, sort of like a story mode, I guess you could say, which was unique for the time when it came out. And then, yeah, here's your, like, playable characters. Which, probably when I actually play the game, I'll probably be playing with either Leo or the Ninja. Most likely the Leo.
And pretty cool showing the stages basically where and what stages are for which characters. Chimera, which makes sense, like an Egyptian background, makes quite a bit of sense given the origins of creatures like chimeras. designs of this character specifically remind me of like earlier designs of uh, or sorry it just hit me earlier I said Ryu Hayabusa I meant to say Strider Hiryu but this actually does remind me a lot of like Ryu Hayabusa And some of this, like, artwork, basically, concept kind of reminds me a little bit of, like, of, like, specific characters from Thundercats. Basic idea of how, like, the animations look. Ready for a duel. And just standing there, quiet, staring off. Perfect for a ninja. This kind of reminds me of uh, actually a creature in like some of the later Samurai Showdown games. I believe it was our Samurai Showdown 5 or 6. Dang. Pretty cool. Definitely some interesting creature designs in this game. But it makes sense since it's supposed to take place in a fantasy world. Now this actually creature or design kind of reminds me a little bit of a creature I saw in years ago in Car Captors. That kind of reminds me a little bit of Prometheus. I will give it points for definitely a lot of very interesting original creature designs. Interesting looking stage. Okay, that is pretty cool. Like one of the heads, like Inca statues, that is pretty awesome. 
love this concept art for s the stages. Now this definitely looks like some I would expect from like a fantasy like movie from like the 80s, some like Black Cauldron. Though the castle kind of reminds me a little bit actually of stuff from like a uh, house moving castle or even Final Fantasy VIII. Classic like uh, designs from like artwork and stuff from concepts from like ancient Chinese actually legends especially the dragon design That's pretty cool. Kind of reminds a little bit of like the floating castle in Darkstalkers. That's pretty cool. Love the whole Mayan design to it. With also booby traps and stuff, quite special. Perfect, actually, since they were known like the Egyptians put a lot of booby traps. You gotta really admire the creativity of the minds as some of the people came up with some of these designs. Interesting, the stage like sort of like a tongue sticking out, which kind of is a reference to, uh, I believe it's uh, Shiva from Hinduism. Kind of reminds me of. And more like Roman and Greek architecture. Ancient Egyptian. Always awesome. Seeing statues of Anubis as well as the Elsene Eye. Obviously influenced of the Greek Colosseum of ancient Rome. And that's it for the artwork. I'll see y'all next time. Same YouTube time, same YouTube channel, and stay safe out there everyone.